This Sunday. Every Sunday. Side by side at the microphone from the green light to the speed trap. Chris Switzer and Ray Garino calls them as they see them, and you better believe them. Here. Relevant news, biased opinions, and outright bullshit regarding every aspect of automotive culture. Gas, Gas. mechanical trickery never before revealed over FCC regulated airwaves. Thrill to the explosive tension as Chris and Ray cuss each other down the track and barrel roll across the finish line, laughing at certain disaster as they shake hands with the devil. <laughs> All that and much more this Sunday at high noon on the Motormouth Radio Hour. Call in and speak live with the Wizards of Speed and Live Feed, Chris Switzer and Ray Garino. Bring the whole family. Kids under 12 get in free. Every Sunday at noon on WHPC. Take the Long Island Expressway to the Meadowbrook Parkway and look for the sign saying no parking on the expressway and no express service on the parkway. Go ride on Highway 24 to Garden City. $2 all-day parking includes pit pass. Yeah, uh, me beep yourself, you rascally roadrunner. <laughs> <laughs> You're beeping at Motormouth Radio, Long Island's only automotive talk show with your hosts, Ray Guarino and Chris Switzer. Chris, how are you today, my friend? <laughs> oh, listening to that uh, guitar riff going on. You know, I'm always thinking, you know, people are taking a break from their good automotive talk shows to listen to us right here at Motormouth Radio. And that pleases me to no end. Right. I'm doing well. How about you? <laughs> Very well. And that was the Gants. The Gants. The yeah, G-A-N-T-S. Um, <clears throat> that are um, doing the song Roadrunner. And we're doing that. We're like, back in our... How would you call the guys at the UD termed us a few years ago Mopar Mouth Radio? <laughs> right, yes, now, I've heard. You certainly have Mopar Mouth because you have one. I, I have parts of one, but I don't have one anymore. <laughs> but no, we have a great guest today. We have Mr. Steve Magnante, Stevie Mags, as you may know him as. Uh, yes. Uh, because he has a new show. Well, we like to keep Steve in rotation, and he has a new show coming on, so we're going to talk all about that uh, in, a, in a few minutes. He's going to come in with, uh, with another special guest. So. Yes, looking forward to it. Very excited, because you know it's always a good time whenever we're talking to Stevie Magneto. Yeah. So we're celebrating, celebrating Mopar again. You know, it's funny because you call me a Mopar guy. I'm alongside the Mopar guys. You know, they, they all thumb their nose. They all look down their nose at my sea body and go, it's way too big. It's way too big for our, our little svelte bee bodies and, and uh, what's the cool? bodies. E bodies. Right. That's it. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> I take up most of the parking space. So there. Yeah, you do. But, uh, for you and Alana share out. <laughs> Another friend out in California who loves, she has an E, but loves the C body as well. Yes, so. yes. And that, that's why we get along. That is true. <laughs> so you can get along with us, too, and call us at 516-572-7440. You could actually ask Steve a question because of the way we'll have him on the show today. You'll be able to interact with him. Yes, it's true. Give us uh, Gives you something else to do with your finger. 516-572-7440. Seven four four zero. That is the phone number to get a hold of us. You can call us now, or you can call us later. That's yeah. how versatile this program is. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> and then we got Chassis John down in Florida in his new garage studio, listening to us in wall to wall stereo. Matt That's Trump, right. Yeah. He's in his uh, crushed velvet smoking jacket. <laughs> yeah, he wears that smoking all the time. his Denoble. Hmm? He wears I'm that sorry. all the time. He wears that regularly. <laughs> we got Matt Man Brian. He's got his finger in a socket somewhere. I hope it's not stuck. I want to use a tool and cut it out. And, you know, Ouch. It. I know. So. Yow. I think we better do the show down there. Yeah, that's probably not a bad idea, right? <laughs> It'll be much more exciting. So did anything go on uh, automotively with you last week that you want to talk about? You know, it's kind of, kind of funny. Since we were, we're trying to keep it brief, I, uh, I have... I'm having this problem with automotive eyesores in my neighborhood. Oh, boy. Especially out my living room window. I mean, it's bad enough, I think I've said to you, that I have to look down the block and I see Audis, you know, and that's, right. that alone makes me go, oh, you know, that just that alone. But now there's an individual that parks his car across the street, and he took the, you know, those J.C. Whitney-like 
bumper rub stripes that are adhesive. They're supposed to prevent door dings, those aftermarket strips that you that some people affix to their vehicles. Yeah. Well, he kind of put it on, and it looks like he put it on and, and cut it in different places. It's not the it's not a part that belongs on the vehicle, mm-hmm. but it kind of makes this. If you look at the side of his SUV, it kind of makes this crooked smile between the wheels <laughs> running down running literally down the, the equator of the car, you know, right down the center. Right. But because he tried to run it along the crease of the door and that, then he kind of, I don't know, he fell asleep or something and then it dipped a little bit and came back up. But like, you have to look across the street from my living room window and see this rub stripe that kind of doesn't fit. And I'm like, I want to go out there with a, with a spatula or yeah. something, scrape that silly thing off and go, God, could you, can we put this on right? Yeah. Or bring a screw gun. <laughs> it's like, how can people just, just be so, I don't know, just flippant about doing this? you got to stare at this thing. Maybe, it, I don't know, it, it enables him to find his car in a sea of gray SUVs that I live amongst. Uh, uh. Literally. Everybody, everybody in this neighborhood, everybody on the, in this state drives a car that's either gray, white, or black. No that's silver? That's it. <laughs> so, yeah, well, it's, that's in the gray family. There, there, there is not a single color okay. vehicle in this, in, this, in this whole area. I was going to say, there are, there are definitely colors that, that are heavier in different areas. And I know, you know, we had two silver cars in the family for a while, and my Mazda, my blue one, my wife hated it because, oh, damn, your car sticks out in the parking lot a quarter mile. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I like yeah. it. It's blue. It's <laughs> big, 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 breasty blue. Yeah. It's true. No, I totally agree. But I've, I've come to realize this has got to be the most um, black and white kind of gray kind of area. There's no imagination when it comes down to vehicle colors here at all. Yeah. And it doesn't, believe me, it doesn't help that I have two green convertibles in my garage that both happen to be Chryslers. Wow. So, it, you know, we get into that conversation, my wife and I. I'm going to take the convertible. Which one? Right. The green one. Which one? The Chrysler. Which one? You I know. know. It's like, <laughs> well, that's a problem. It that doesn't a, help. That's a problem of another entity altogether. But at least you have green. You have colors, so that's good. Right. You should just say I'm either going to take the small car or the big car out today. That's what it turns into. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Going to take the little one or going to take the big one. That's right. it. That's it. Covers all the bases. But yeah, it's, it's just this little bit of automotive minutia that just makes me crazy. Uh, take a little time. Put Sit there with like a, 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 a felt tip marker or something. Mark it out. Do you know how long it took me to put that rocker molding uh, on, on the bottom of the of the three? Hundred, holy smokes! I know you're all tired of hearing it, but gee, it literally one one side took two and a half days to put on because I had to make sure mm. it was right. Well, yeah. and you know how how long perfection takes. Yeah, it depends you on know. one's ability. But you you're gonna have to live with it the rest of yeah, your life, or at right. least as long as you own a car. Right, right, right. So. Right. so Make it right for crying out yeah, loud! Yeah. Don't skimp on it. No, this, so now it, I, you know if you think about it, they're two very, very similar projects. It's a long piece of trim on the side of a car. Yours was very low. This one was in the middle, but it's the right. same idea about how to how to reference it and get it in there correctly. Yeah, but the, here's something that I've learned growing up. Growing up with guys like you, that if you do skimp on the job, if you do mount the fender and it's a little off and go, ah, the heck with it. No big deal. No one's, no one's going to notice. You had friends, I'm sure, growing up that <laughs> noticed. And you had friends not only grew up and noticed, but would break your shoes unmercifully. You know, because the, well, you'd be like, what? Look at a gap in his fender. I can, I can, you know, I can get my foot in that. You, you know, know what the problem is? I had friends like Steve Magnatic and like Chassis John, who, yeah, definitely <laughs> would be like, hey, get over here. What the? Oh, forget. I mean, you, you we could get into the way that you were derided, but then we'd be off the air, you know. <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about. It's yes, it was tough, but it, you know what? And it made some of us, you know, work and strive to be a little better and a little more polished. Yes. And, and and but luckily, you know, I have some friends too where they were just like, eh, so what? Like, yeah, mm-hmm. and just didn't, you know, like uh, that's what it is. What it's okay, it's fine. 
you know, and off they yeah, went. Yeah, M- makes me great. Right, and off they went. Yeah. The happy, happy little booger heads, they all right. were. I get it. I get it. Because, you know, the um, the amount of time it takes to get it 90% done compared to getting it 100% done is astronomical. That yeah. amount of time alone to get it that 10% better is always much, much, much more. So you could just say, yeah, 90% is fine. Uh, yeah. But these people are saying, like, 10% oh, is I fine. I'll tell you, I had a friend, so, uh, a good friend stopped at the house this morning, dropped me off a carburetor. He actually owns my sister's old uh, Mercury. So I'm going to rebuild the carburetor. And he got to see, he saw my Pontiac. He hadn't seen it. And he's like, oh, my God, this is gorgeous. He's like, and looking at the trim, I'm like, there it is. There's the jewelry. I, and I said, you know, all that work. I said, you know, the painter, obviously, I've always said, gets all the credit for how a car looks. You know, forget sure. the hours and the hours of mechanical work and fabrication and stuff that I did underneath. Forget all that. It's the painter gets the, the, the glory. Hey, you know, that's the You're way right. it is. But on top, I'm going to say one more thing. The polisher trumps the play, pay, painter. Because if the paint is nice, that trim makes the paint really look better. And he's You're the right. guy who's the king in my... So we kind of went through all of that this morning. It was kind of... Interesting. I said, do you want to see the underside? Can I jack it up a little? He's like, no, 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 I don't want to see that. <laughs> you know, it's funny on the, you talk about, talk about things like that and alignment. The, uh, the door on the, on the Christ on the 300 is on the passenger door is up just a little bit. When I say just a little bit, when you run your finger along the top of the Chrome, you get to that part, boom, it's just a little bump. So that, the, that door is up a little bit. And I can't tell you how many times I've loosened that door and just tried to slam it and tried to wrestle with it to get it to drop oh, not even a sixteenth of an inch just to get all of my lines to line up all, all of the body lines and the chrome all to line up because when you look at you see that little disturbance in the middle of the car that little blip that little sound cough <laughs> right in the in the little fluid wave it's it's uh, it makes me nuts and it's probably one of those things I'm going to do after the show is I'm going to run out there and try and try and attempt to realign that door again but you're right it's those little things and I do believe the polisher is more of like you say is more of a value at times because you have you ever seen cars that were freshly painted but the bumpers still yeah look look terrible they took the old bumpers off the car slapped them back on the car or they took the old grill and put it back on the car the headlight bezels put them back on the car they didn't even clean them up right and you're like yeah. makes the paint look like poo right. let me ask you this i you know you're talking about a little imperfection the you know, we all know the assembly line procedures for any of those cars not just chrysler's was not that great i mean they were just shipping them out the door so you may be dealing yeah. with something that's inherently in the car that you, yeah, I mean, maybe you can get it a little. You may spend hours to get it like a hundredth of a percent better. <laughs> you may be right. You may be right, but I'm going to do it. I, I mean, mean, it's you know, it's we, one of those things. Well, we've seen it on the TV shows, especially where guys get to the the trim, the, the stainless steel trim around the windows, the front and rear window on the A body cars, especially. And mm-hmm. what they're doing is they put that molding in, and, and there's a gap or it's tight, so they're filing away the tight spot, and, they, and they're welding in metal, usually on the curve, to fill up that gap to make that molding fit. But as a production line thing, it was fine. They threw it in, hit the clips, done, out the <laughs> door. You know. So again, you're optimizing the, uh, you know, the thing. Hey, we also have uh, we got Al listening today out in uh, in Georgia. So I don't know. Hey, he must have he must have like the tinfoil antenna up o- o- over the trees <laughs> on the camper. But howdy, Al. Um, yeah. sig- the signal is really going out. That's nice. Yeah, that's good. The internet is working. It's very nice to, know. nice to know. So yeah, I wish you luck with that because you're like I said, you're dealing with what I think are assembly line imperfections that could be. Yeah, but you know that it's one of those things that any one of my what would you say anal friends will come oh, over yeah. and go what's with that come on you, know, you gotta I, be kidding me let me tell you about assembly line thing that now became a quality of life thing that made a big difference me on my fj the uh, the the door stop or they call it a door check which is when you open the door it let it stop halfway and not right. fly open well mine was just flying open and it was just you know hitting the um it was just basically hitting the car next to me so i had to be very careful opening that door sure but to change it i bought one got it new and to change it, you have to have the door panel off. So I was waiting until I did the speakers, so I'd only have to take the door panel off one time instead of twice. Well, I changed it. And let me tell you, what a quality of life difference that makes. Because really? Now to open that door, it just goes halfway and just stops. It's like there's someone <laughs> on the other side. I'm like, wow. <laughs> now, I've only been driving this thing a couple months, so I haven't lived with this for years, but already it was a pain in the neck. And if there was wind and it grabs the door, you know, I'm very careful of that. Sure, I mean, sure. Because you, know, you don't want the door to even open 
all the way. If it's not going to hit another car, you don't want those hinges getting stressed. So right, I was exactly. very conscious of that. I changed that part last week, and I tell you, wow, what a difference. So, you know, if you how have... Was it, hmm? How was it changing the part? Was it... Did, Piece did of you need long? Oh, I was going to say, no. you need, didn't need long, tapery fingers to take cotton out of uh, little, you, ball, if, little, little pills, little bottles? Take a look. I, put, I posted it on Twitter, which is Motormouth Radio. It's on Instagram, which is real underscore Motormouth Radio. Mm-hmm. And uh, it goes on, on Facebook, which is Motormouth Radio. And it's a 10 millimeter bolt in the door jam. And it's a, and then it's two 10 millimeter nuts that hold the oh, actual hello? striker in. <laughs> and I tell you what. <laughs> Door, and look who's here. The doorbell <laughs> rang. And we answered. So let me, let wait. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I hear the doorbell. Let, let, let me listen. <laughs> oh, who is that? <laughs> Oh, hi, Steve Bagnante is in with us. I love the bass line of that song, boy. <laughs> How are you, Steve? Howdy, Steve. Well, doing good. Excellent. <laughs> you look great. It's just we're looking. We can see each other in a Zoom meeting. With we have the benefit of doing that, which is awesome. <laughs> the the right. one good thing to come out of COVID, I guess. This uh, yes, it did. <laughs> very true. Very true. You know, it, it's so funny because we had so many technical glitches because of that, and we got the show down to. We, we've mastered th- the show this way. This is it. This is the mastery of the show. This is what it, the finely tuned program looks like. Yeah, it probably, won't right. any, it probably won't get any better than this is what he's saying. So, yeah. <laughs> And also, That's for sure. we have another special guest. We have Mike in the house. Yeah, Mike Pantaleo. Hey, Mike. That's me. Hey, How you doing, guys? You're talking there he is. Ray Hi, Ray. Mike. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing well. How you guys doing? <laughs> Got to make the screen wider for you. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Full screen. That so, is cool. Mike, you like, you're sitting on your, your screened-in porch or on your deck. That's Well, that it's, not is, screen, it's not screened in, but... Nice. Wow. That's yeah. a nice view. You're going nice. fancy over here. Very cool. cool. Yeah. How are you guys doing? I'm We're in the air conditioning, well so I'm on fine. radio, having a good time and just yeah. uh, shooting the breeze, uh, waiting for you guys to show up, which was oh, nice. Good. <laughs> so, Steve, tell nice us. Breeze, cool. eh? You know, of course, we had you I'm on. I'm sorry, what was that? The nice breeze today. It's a good one to have. Yes, That's good. yes very true. How did, I, I got to ask, how did you two get together to do this new show for Steve, right? Can we talk about this? Yeah, it might take it. Oh, sure. I guess I'll take it. Um, yeah, why not? This was something that sort of just came about a little bit in a, um, I don't want to say in a rush, but it was a moment of opportunity. It's a, it's an idea that I had brought to, uh, well, it's sort of an idea I had brought to Motor Trend a few months ago. Um, Steve had done Junkyard Gold for how many seasons, Steve? Three seasons? Three. Three, three, three seasons. seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, great show. Did really well. He had a lot of fans that enjoyed it. For whatever reason, it didn't get renewed. I'm not really sure why. Um but I had brought this uh, a very similar idea, which was, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, uh, with ASMR. It's a bit of a um, YouTube internet sensation phenomenon thing, which is it's videos of people doing something or even just talking to camera and um, may, recording in fine detail sounds sounds from their hands or sounds from their mouth or sounds from whatever they're working on and it's meant to be really sort of like a meditative experience and i had heard about this and i watched a couple of videos and i kind of got this idea that like i I knew steve and i knew that he loved building model cars and he'd always wanted to do a show sort of rooted in that and for some reason the two things crossed in my mind and i thought the idea of steve building model cars with us paying really fine attention to the sound of an exacto knife scraping across uh, a piece of plastic and the and the rustling of the trees in the box and the sort of the plastic being torn open the little the little air bubble that you can hear when you're when you're dropping a little bit of glue just out of the bottle those little things so that's kind of how i pitched it to him wow typically yeah. if, if you're pitching a show you've got to expect that it's going to change a little bit it's never going to come through exactly as you planned it. So sure, never do. that was the one little thing that if we can get the show across and that falls away, that's okay. That's yeah. fine. You know, I do um, remember my, so uh, I pitched that weird little sound version of the show um, and they went for it. They, they had a hole that they needed to fill through the month of June and they said, let's, let's try it out. Let's see how it works. So <laughs> we're doing a, a limited it. run of four <laughs> episodes of it, which oh. 
fine, we're getting started, and that that's great. But if we can get the momentum, I think we can do this again. Yeah. Mike, I'm thinking, you know, it's funny because I'm a TV guy at heart, gra old, old graphics TV guy, and I'm thinking, like, how much this is going to cost to produce. Like, you're going to have, like, two cameras on a dining room table <laughs> or on a tool bench or something along those lines. <laughs> if, if you look, you know, at regular YouTube, because there's a handful of, of YouTube um, channels out there or, or online channels out there of guys building models. And it's, sure. typically, it's typically just that. It's at most two cameras. It's something usually just an overhead. That right. looks down and you can see the workshops and what they're doing. Um, I, I don't have exact numbers to give on what we spent for this, to be honest. But I'll tell you, we had, <laughs> we had myself and Steve out there. We had um, a director of photography and a camera operator who was also our editor. Uh, right. We had three full-size cameras. We had an overhead we had an audio set up. We had a legitimate full oh sure deal. We had lights and cameras, and we had action. So oh, it was wow. um, it, it, it's it's definitely leveled up from your from your run of the mill YouTube or and it's it's not really an instructional show, but it's leveled up from anything that you'll see. It's very very intimately and tightly shot. You can see the details of what's happening. Um, I don't know. You might be able to tell, but I'm really proud of it. I like it a lot. So, Steve, let yeah. me ask well, you, from doing all... I got to say, from my side of the coin, you know, I mean, Junkyard Gold ran three seasons. It, it came to an end. I was a little bit crestfallen. And I thought, well, I guess, guess that's it. And I get a call from Levi Rugg, who's one of the executives at Motor Trend, saying, hey, there's a show that uh, they want to do. It's about model cars. And in my heart of hearts, it's the first show I would love to pitch, but the last show I would ever pitch because it's such a niche thing. Well, thank goodness, you know, Mike came up with the idea of doing this and they reached out and says, yeah, let's, let's do this. So I just got done with a nine day visit to Texas shooting a Mopar horde that's going to go up for auction in October. Anyway, so I came home, I had two days to prepare for shooting four episodes in a oh six gosh. day rip. So, uh, so I got that done. And, and then arrive uh, along comes Mike and, and Chris Reed, who, uh, of course, was my director and, and kind of producer, I guess, on Junkyard Gold. Good to see him again. And then a sound man, uh, I forget his name. And then our, our, our friend uh, Chris Roberts, who kind of helped out with, with juggling stuff. But in my house, when I got home from Texas, was a mountain about three or four feet tall of like 25 model kits, cases of Gatorade, tables, all this kind of stuff. Wow. And then on top of that, on uh, Tuesday, the guys landed at Logan with something like 24 pellets cases of gear <laughs> and so anyway i'm like what did i get oh myself my into here but the good news is uh you know we started shooting on wednesday and uh, a week later we had four episodes um, in the can and the first one runs on monday so uh, I'm, th I'm thrilled it was a wonderful thing that fell in my lap Oh, my God. Steve, how did you, I mean, when, what did you do in those two days to prepare for the show? Well, as, as you can imagine, you know, what you don't want to do is sit around with a crew of people who are all on the clock, you know, including myself, waiting sure. for the paint to dry. So what they did, <laughs> you know, they sent out four examples of each model kit. So that way, in the two days, I could prepare one that was fully painted but not assembled and one that was primered but not assembled, and then just the raw pieces and parts. So I basically did that. We did choose two of the four models um, because they were pleasant to look at without paint. And I'll hint at what they are a little later on, maybe. I'll get so, so, so you'll be, you'll be, wait, wait a minute. That, that, that I hear you. I hear you now. <laughs> I wasn't hearing Ray before. No, I, I, hear have to, I have to mute okay, this. I don't know if you can now hear him. Now. See, now yeah. I don't hear him. Do you hear Ray? No. You know, I, I've heard Ray at times uh, very low compared to you guys. And I do see there's a microphone with a red X through it on yeah. Ray. It has I to don't be know muted or else it purpose. feeds back. Yeah. I'm, trying to get, I'm trying to get Ray back again. I, don't think so. <laughs> I can I tell you this. So. His Zoom is muted. It, yeah. It has it to be. Yes. Keep talking. He's yeah, Hold so, on. <laughs> He's you know, going off. He's off and running. He's got to go get technical support. We, we've all become <laughs> semi-pro at the Zoom over this last year. Definitely it is not pro bro, but semi pro. It is the truth, Mike. It is. It's kind of funny, and it, it, it is so. It's so ironic how we have tried to produce the show, but end up with with the technical glitches kind of interwoven into it. After a while, it's just okay. 
That's what it is. Yeah. It's even though even though the show is produced and we have our questions and whatever have you, it is still flying by the seat of our pants. So it's yeah. it's always a beautiful thing. But yeah, the, the, the that was a great idea, Steve, to actually have the models built in different stages, so you could just move one model out and move another model in, which is which is awesome. To because I'm thinking of the same thing you were saying. Like I'm coming up with that. Look, how do you watch sit and watch paint dry, yeah. or, or do you start on another model? Is 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 that what uh, is is that what needs to happen and and uh, uh just to have that have it that way um check you can't one two check one two by the way there you are there you are great we got you thanks ray <laughs> stay with us stay with us you know this is another thing we hadn't done yet with this with this system so now now i know <laughs> we look lo- you know what guys we like just like I was going to say, how long does it take cyanoacrylate to dry? We learn how to do a radio show every week. <laughs> I was just saying it. I was just saying, even though we're produced, sometimes we just we just incorporate the technical difficulties right into the production. I was going to say, the good thing is we're old enough not to really care to get flustered anymore. It's like, all right, another another you know another log in the road. Let's jump over it. <laughs> that, is, that is one of the uncelebrated rites of passage. It's just getting old enough to not care. Exactly. It's the yeah. truth. This is truth. It's a, my Mike, I'm sure you go through it in your career. I'm sure you've gone through this. is probably the regular all the time. We, we, we do the same thing. You run into some sort of glitch or just some sort of issue in the story for the day, and there's not much you can do. You're not, you're not going to stop. You're just going to figure something out and keep going. Right. Mm-hmm. Something <laughs> happens. It always does. I say that more often than I care to admit, but you just kind of got to go for it. Sometimes. The show must go on. Right. <laughs> it does. And it does. And here we are. Right. No, that, that's for sure. But I love the fact that you were talking about the sounds of model mm. building. Those are things, Steve, you know, those are the things that only modelers know. Only modelers have that feel for the exacto knife cutting around all the little areas and taking the swarth off the off the plastic, off those molded pieces, off the hoods and the trunks and all those things. You that's such a technique. Are you going to be a um, nut? Who the hell pays attention to that? Oh, come on. You got to be kidding me. That stuff is awesome. I was going to say, I, mean, I, say, I think like when I'm building a real car, it's the sound when I have to get up that my knee makes when I go, <laughs> ah, or my back makes. Those are the sounds I'm paying attention to. <laughs> <laughs> or the arthritis in my hand, like, oh. Well, I mean, the sound of the, the rattler in the spray can, we right. all know that sound. Yeah. Right. I like to swirl it around. I like to make the ball go around and around. I kind of like that one. I do too. It's almost therapeutic in a way. Yes, <laughs> and you know, a little Zen moment going. You, you couldn't hear it before, but what I was trying to say when I was muted was my my one daughter just graduated with a fine arts degree from a, a city school, and she she mentioned this technique to me a while ago, and I'm like, what are you talking about? And they were going to incorporate it into some projects of theirs, and I and so now it's all coming back, and I can't wait to tell her that. You know, this is uh, this is what's taking place because it's good to see she's really learning real world stuff. That was yeah. that was good. Yeah. Is there going to be technique in the show, Steve? Like you go into like have tech tips, model tips, because you know that there's obviously there's not going to be people that are going to be sitting there building a model, watching you build the model. But are you going to have like tech tips along with the build as well? Yeah, indeed. Well, you know, like like every show, it's it's 22 minutes long, built for a half hour potentially to be on air, but at this point in time on Motor Trend On Demand. And, um, you know, it's, it's always what to leave out. But with that said, you know, the story has a beginning, middle, and end. And Mike was very good at keeping me on point, I guess, instead of diverting into uh, the history of Ravel models. We did some of that, certainly. But, but also, you know, the, the beauty was being able to uh, show where the best Dana 60 rear axle comes from, some sev- from several kits, you know, the MPC-56 uh, Ford pickup truck or the Ravel 68 Charger. They both have Danas, but they're radically different, and one is much nicer than the other. you got to see the show to find out which one it is. But, you know, things like that. We kind of, you know, we took real-world uh, junkyard crawl stuff and we applied it to the 125th scale parts bin. It's kind of the same. Steve, did that you explain? Is- did you explain? to Mike, Dead Cat Storage? Ah, yes. Well, de- 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 ca- Dead Cat Space. We did talk about okay. that. Oh, space. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Even I know Dead Cat Space. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is the thing that automotive designers describe as the space between the tire and the top of the wheelhouse. And if you're a four-wheel drive kind of guy, you want to see a lot of Dead Cat Space. I mean, the idea, I guess, is that kitty cats sleep on the tire. Right. And if you're following up the vehicle, you, drive. you know, we, we love cats, by the way. Speaking mm-hmm. of which, you see a cat in, in some of the episodes. Good. But, uh, but you usually call Dead Cat Space. Yeah. Right. Well, 
I'll tell you what else is, is dead cat space around here. It's the bottom of the hour. We have to take our break. And we need to ask Chris if he has the vaulted and honorable, always funny, always timely honor group of the hour. Yes, we do, Ray. Thank you so much for asking me that. We do have the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour. And this week, if you've ever installed some makeshift theft deterrent in your vehicle, what? You say you would not pay those high prices over at Phil's Auto Radio to go get that little blippy thing and uh, and the little beeper for your car? You don't want the professional alarm system? You say you did it yourself with a cutoff switch, a quarter-inch jack, and a barrel fuse? Or you just walked around the bar of the club with a coil wire in your back pocket? Mm. Well, if you figured out how to keep your car from getting robbed with just a few parts from a junk drawer or the radio shack down the block, which is no longer there, then you're part of the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour. Excellent. (laughs) Thank you for that. I have a coil wire in my pocket right now. There you go. I'll tell you what, we're going to throw this to our guests because we like to be interactive. Mike, you have the cowbell. I need you to play that. Steve... Of course, I need the I need you to use that starter motor that's sitting over there by the on the bench by you. And we'll kick this off. We'll take a little break. We'll be back in about two minutes or so with more Motormouth Radio with your host, Ray Guarino, Chris Switzer, and of course Steve and Mike. Hit it, boys. show on 90.3 WHPC is brought to you by Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision with two locations in Limbrook and Oceanside who remind you that New York State law says you always have the right to choose which shop will fix your car. Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision offers a full range of services. 24-hour towing between Montauk and Manhattan, shuttle service, and they can help you with a rental car arrangement if needed. All repairs include the Car Star Lifetime Nationwide Warranty, ensuring that the experts at Celebrity Chase Collision are always on your side. Y si, hablamos español. More information is available by calling 516-593-0920 or visiting online at celebritychasecollision.com. You're listening to the Motor Mouth. You know them. So nice talking to you guys. I miss you. You love them. I heard you talking about us, so I thought I'd call in. Motor Mouth! You want to serve dinner to them. How you doing, guys? Sorry to interrupt. How are you, Ray? <laughs> Chris, this is the sharpest drill bit, right? This is the first time that I'm actually listening live and working on a car. Our trained staff of two will help. I'll okay. call you back when I have the solution. Well, well, thanks a lot, guys. That definitely points me in the right direction. Now hold your breath. I hope you're sitting down. Motor Mouth! A tornado of urban legend and BS. No. I'm not going to wax my Johnson. I'm going to wax my Evan Root. As always, you are a consummate professional. When I listen on my laptop, I got to keep that thing screaming. I don't mean to blow you up on the airwaves. Quite frankly, there are better things to do with your time. <laughs> oh, this is why I call, uh, call on Wimble by accident. I want you all to know, sometimes I don't even wear pants. I have no clue, and I can't hit it with a hammer to fix it. Yeah, I want to know what the is wrong with my car. They're going to give you guys a call and talk to you. Vote them out. I'm in the car now. They're going to talk about working on cars, but not going to work on yours. There is no answer, and it makes you think, and I like the things that make you think. What are you doing here? (laughs) (laughs) I'm on break. (laughs) Okay, good. So are we. There are answers, sometimes correct ones, and we may have them. Radio 90.3 FM WHPC. Motor Mouth. Got a car question? Give the Motor Mouth a call at 516-572-7440. Aha, in the song ended on me again. <laughs> Darn it. I hate when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> you timed out on me, you little bugger. I thought I had That's it. That's why I didn't say anything. I wasn't saying anything. I had it I just a, a couple of seconds that I, damn, sometimes it works. Some, hey, it's live radio, <laughs> folks. Like Kim said, give us a call, 516-572-7440. You can talk with Steve and Mike and, and ask him a question. But I want to know about why Jimmy Addison used four Cadillac mufflers. Ah, okay, Jesus. okay. Then you've been uh, seeing. You know, both. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. Well, we got to remember that Jimmy Addison had a car called the Silver Bullet, and you. And uh, this, of course, began life as the Ravel um, Sausage Martin 
GTX kit, this puppy right here. Right. Uh, the the Silver are, Bullet was a 67 uh, Plymouth GTX, yes. That's, that's right. In fact, in Carcraft magazine back in uh, 1971, my old editor at Hot Rod magazine did a story on Jimmy Addison and the Silver Bullet. And the thing of it is, you know, back in the 60s, um, well, the street racing was a big deal on Detroit's Woodward Avenue. And, um, you know, it was dangerous things done safely, if you can say that. But anyway, with, with that said, uh, the Plymouth uh, Silver Bullet it was was actually factory sponsored so the guys uh tom hoover and uh dick maxwell from chrysler from the ram chargers would quite often trickle things like cross rams uh, holly uh, dominator carburetors tunnel rams to jimmy addison to evaluate them in the real world situation on the street so anyway the car was crazy loud so they put four mufflers under it so you can see wow. right Oh, and it's, holy and smokes. The idea was, and here's the funny thing, you know, Cadillac in the 1950s was one of the first American car makers to really accentuate dual exhaust systems because, you know, to have a V8 under the hood in the 50s was was power, it was status. Uh, but by 1961, as Cadillac shifted its emphasis away from luxury and performance to luxury, they went to single exhaust systems. If you look at any 1961 through, gosh, 1985-ish Cadillac, they yeah. have single exhaust, even the uh, Eldorado with 500 cubic inches, but they had massive, like two and a half inch diameter pipes to let the engine breathe, but not make resonation with two systems, you know, so this one. Mm -hmm. So big Cadillac mufflers were the trick for high flow with low sound. So Addison oh, used wow. four of them. Wow. In fact, here's a shot right here from the magazine story, which I can kind of show you. Yeah, uh, you see it's them tucked in there. Two, and it is three and four, they're up they're sort of, it's not a great shot, but they're hidden uh, elsewhere. But there's four of them, so we replicated that with the silver bullet. Nice. There they are, all four of those muscles. That looks fantastic. Steve, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be Steve Magnante about this. Sure. <laughs> when you're building your, the silver bullet, did you make the quarter panels a little wider? Me. If I remember correctly, they the silver bullet had the rear tires tucked under. They wanted to keep that car low key as possible, right? right. Yeah, they, they made did. the they made the quarter panels like they widened them out, but they kept all the lines. They didn't just cut the wheel well and like uh, you know right. ghouled it up a little bit. Did were you able to replicate that on the model as well? Here's the answer, and the answer is. Mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> that is. I, I sort of left that out of the recipe. I thought, well, as long as we get the four mufflers, the silver paint, the cross ram, and the Hemi in the single seat, the A100 right. will be 99% of the way there. Trouble is, to do that properly on a 22 minute show, I thought to myself, you know what, Steve, Ooh, yeah. you can do one thing. You can do two things. You could, you know, do, um, you know, sectioning of the quarter panels, move them out, or heat it up with a bit, put your thumb on it, and hope you get it right. 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 <laughs> and not once, but. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, twice. So, Oh, I skipped oh that element of the <laughs> Good idea. And, uh, <laughs> and, and with that said, I've always kind of thought it was one of the uglier things on the car. I mean, if Addison, I mean, I would say this, that hindsight right. 2020, I'd have narrowed the Dana just about an inch or two on each side and tucked this mini tub bit. Um, and that's what I would have done to solve the problem. Because if you look at pictures of the silver bullet, especially like by 72, he had even larger slicks and Fenton slotted aluminum wheels. Those slicks must have rubbed on mm -hmm. anything other than an absolute straight ride. So, oh, yeah. Said, I, you know, I would, I would have said, hey, Jimmy, narrow your rear end and mini tub that thing. You'd be all set, you know, but <laughs> then again, you know, yeah. so, uh, but no, we did not go there with that. Because again, you have, to, you have to, you have to consider what to leave out in order to keep the ball rolling forward. Right. Very true. So, Mike, true. how is it to film a show like this as opposed, well, I guess a lot of it was your idea, too, with the, you know, with the, with the detail, but as opposed to, I see you wearing a Nip Tuck shirt. That was one of my favorite shows back in the day. <laughs> you know, there were so many good shows that, that, that just went the way of the, uh, the, the past, but how this different, is, huh? This is actually uh, not uh, nip and tuck the show. Oh, it's a grill. I was wearing it. It's a uh, bar and grill. The it's barbershop? a bar and grill my girlfriend owns in Long Branch, New Jersey. If anybody's oh. in the area, go feel free to check it out. It's, cool. it's a great little spot. It's, <laughs> okay. um, it's the, it's a, it's an old um, prohibition era term nice. for when you couldn't obviously go to a bar and grab alcohol. Guys would grab a flask out of their jacket pocket, take a nip, and tuck and it tuck. back. Wow, and cool. Nip and tuck. Very it's, it's, it's a real term. Neat. But yeah, wow. anyway. Oh, cool. Anyway, uh, I guess the question can be modified and still stands. Like, what was it like to do a, a project like this as opposed to the more traditional ones? In ways, way, di way more difficult, mm -hmm. but also because we shot, really, we shot four episodes over six days. So the fact that we shot 
call it an episode and a quarter in a day went really, really quickly um, for the most part. So I work on three other shows from Rotor Trend as well. I work on Dirt Every Day and Hot Rod Garage and Engine Masters. Engine Masters shoots an episode right. in a day for the most part, but all the others shoot five episodes, or I'm sorry, not five episodes, um, five days, sometimes six or seven for a single full car build. So there's a lot more going on. There's a lot more moving parts, if, you know, literally moving parts. Um, we are building engines, right? Uh, installing differentials. We're, we're doing full-size car work and there's the parts issues, there's the parts availabilities, there's the parts fit that all comes with that. And it slows down the process. So to be able to go and do effectively a full car build, clearly in 125th scale, in a day was really um, kind of refreshing. You knew what you wanted to get. You knew what you wanted to, what your end product was going to be. And the variables along the way were really streamlined. And, you know, I I give a lot of that credit to Steve because, you know, he did he did spend those days pre-painting and pre-priming some things so we could do that sort of cooking show style of of making an episode where you've got the the batter already mixed in one bowl you show it on camera and then you can slide that one aside take the one that's been proofed in the fridge for an hour and continue on you know that's what um, i thought so- earlier when you couldn't hear me i was gonna say steve was like the graham care of of model building you know if everybody remembers the galloping gourmet back in the you know, in the 60s and 70s, it's, uh, that was like the first. My mother used to watch it when I was a kid, so I'd see it. And like, wow, how'd they get that turkey at? Like, now he's got a full done turkey. It's like, you know, 15 minutes he's drinking wine. And that's <laughs> like. You know, to, to that point, <laughs> some, some years back, I did a show called um, Classic Car Restoration mm-hmm. for the, um, the DIY channel, which is scripts. And in fact, on Motor Trend on Demand, you can actually see those episodes from, gosh, 20 years ago. Wow. We did, my Mustang and a 62 uh, Thunderbird Sports Rocher. But anyway, uh, the producer on that show was a lady named Melissa Cross. And her point was, uh, her background was what she called pour and dump shows. In other words, cooking shows. Right. Because <laughs> you know, you're pouring and dumping liquids and stuff and making cakes and whatever it is. And she did say, indeed, to your point, that they would have sometimes a staff of seven or eight people with the, the food prepared and various stages. I kind of thought to myself, you know, that's going to come in useful at some point in time. And that's pretty much the mentality we utilize for the show to, to make sure that we didn't have to sit around waiting for the cook to, you know, the, 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 the cake to rise or the paint to dry, so to speak. So, uh, it worked out well. I always we had- wondered on, on the car shows like Engine Masters, which is a great show, like what are the poor camera guys doing when you know? Because you know, like you said, you have to wait for the parts unless they've already pre-ordered them. I would think they did, but then you know, there's always fitment issues or hardware issues or something breaks or we don't have something. And you know, I guess you got to like have a good book to read. Uh, well, for for the crew, sometimes you do have to have a good book to read. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of times, if, like on Engine Masters. If, you don't know the show. It's there. It's scientific testing. It's A/B testing um, with generally American V8 engines on a dyno stand. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know it could be testing anything from a camshaft to mufflers to head flow, things like that. Um, there is there's changeover. Sometimes you have to change out the bottom end, and that takes time, especially if you're working on a dyno. So yeah, there's some sitting around and reading. Um, it's uh, Chris Reed, who is the director of that show and was a camera operator in this show. Um, he's really good about helping organize the day. So he knows that if we shoot this test up front while you're rebuilding this stuff over here, we can also continue shooting this introduction and these shots, these beauty shots we have to get over here. So a lot of it just sort of, it's an ongoing uh, ballet really of figuring out how to keep everybody busy and getting everything we need within what is hopefully a a, uh, a twelve hour day? Yeah, it was. It's kind well, of funny because less than twelve hour day. I guess it was right. about ten years ago. Chris and I did an episode of a show that was called Hard Parts South Bronx. Yes, and back then it was on Speed, and we were up in the Bronx filming for the day. And uh, yeah, we got to see that back, and it was a lot of fun. Of course, I had to keep going to the craft table to get us because we were trying to, you know, donuts. Get more donuts. <laughs> the oh, most you need us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I loved so, our direction. Our direction was always good. All right, you guys. Be funny, yeah. You guys, be funny. Okay, well, talk the, about the AMC and uh, just uh, you know, give me like uh, three minutes. Go, like right. <laughs> okay, I'm sure you got this a lot too, guys. That was a great take. Do it again. It was perfect. Just do it a little better. <laughs> Actually, yes. they, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> yes, so. guilty, guilty. I've been that guy. I've been yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Has anything happened during the uh, shoot of uh, of of Steve's model show that that has? 
something worth noting? Uh, anything explode or was there any sort of catastrophe? <laughs> Blew or? the cat to the table, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fluffy no, walks across the... I don't think there's any real calamities. We got to meet your cat. That was really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Silly Willie. In fact, she's she's in the, uh, I think, the, uh, the the funny car folk art episode, which uh, involves a 67 Chevelle and, yeah, the cat. Nice. Um, they were, well, like, gluing my fingers together would happen a couple times here and there with the super glue. Right. But, uh, but it went pretty well. Planning was the key on that that whole thing. And, and um, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of planning and, and just good teamwork. Now, Steve, since you mentioned that, I, I brought up earlier, that is another tip that I th- you brought up with us on on plane and traffic on Thursday night that you don't use testers model glue correct you use cyanoacrylate which is crazy glue yeah it's true I mean you know back around I started building models when I was probably seven six or seven years old so we're talking like 1977 78 and you know then as now I guess certain people can abuse testers model cement by inhaling it or whatever they do right and so there was this big crackdown on that head of your mom's signature so it was a thing called no talks which was made, I think, by MPC, but it was a citrus-based cement that would theoretically uh, attack the plastic on the edges and bond it together, which is about what this, the same thing that um, that uh, toluene and testers traditional cement does too. But trouble is with those, you got to wait for them to dry. And it, right. it can take, literally, I remember in, in a Ravel uh, instruction sheets, they'd say bond parts together and then and then wrap with rubber band weight yeah. overnight. Right. I'm like, right. yes, overnight. Yeah, you know. So anyway, so I discovered cyanoacrylate in the form of uh, Zappa Gap way back in 1980, and I uh, haven't looked back since. And it's it's yeah. commonly available, and it, you know you don't sniff it or any kind of junk. So you have to right. sign up for it. The other side too is another thing called uh, Zip Kicker. A few different names for it, but it's another chemical that makes the cyanoacrylate kick instantly. Which uh, if you're not patient enough to wait three minutes, you can have it in three seconds. And we we use that too on the show. And, yeah. Uh, I think the traditional, uh, you know, model cement might have turned off as many people as as it allowed them to uh, to build. But but super glue is the key to making models quickly for TV or otherwise. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And from the TV side, I'm very appreciative of both cyanoacrylate and zip kicker. It yeah. really helps move the day along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you didn't just go to the hobby store and buy one model and seven tubes of glue like we did. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> I tell you, I, I remember. I remember using that testers glue as a kid. Like, I'm a car guy, and I think you know part of the appeal of the show is that every car guy and gal out there probably started building models when they were a kid. Yeah. It's sort of like the impetus of every car hobby. Um, you know, I used the, the the tubes of testers as a kid, and sure. I remember waiting forever and just getting impatient. I didn't have that le- level of attention span. I guess I still don't. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it wasn't. It didn't just take time. It also made a mess. There was glue on every body panel. There was glue on. There was my my little eight year old thumbprints on every window that I ever. Oh built. yeah. <laughs> That's the way it was. Right. Right. And, you know, the, the fumes the fumes were a thing. I'll tell you what, you know, I, I lived in a, an old house built in 1720. We still have it. And, but I'd close my room and listen to the radio and build model cars. And my dad would come <laughs> up the stairs to say, you know, dinner's ready. He'd open it and goes, phew, steamed. And I'm like, what? Right. <laughs> and I wasn't wow. a car. You know, I went to the <laughs> smelled like cement. And, you know, it's probably not so good for your brain cells, with whatever I have of them left. But uh, I'll but tell the new- you, the same thing happened in the 90s when my kids were young and I did whiteboard markers. Big, so I brought them a big four by eight whiteboard with a, like, you know, 32 markers. I remember I had to go in and call them for dinner once, open the door. And I went, whoa, contact <laughs> high off the, off the whiteboard markers. Like, all right, come on, out of the room, out of, <laughs> open the windows. Open a window, crack yeah. a window. Which is what yeah, I they smell like grapes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like to say that all that early exposure must have just added to your creativity because it's gotten to you, gotten you to where you are. So, all right, we'll take that. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to, you know, get a leg up on something that I did wrong any way I can. So if I can, <laughs> you know, and now you can't get a leg up. <laughs> now I can. Now I go. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mike, you said you're a car guy. What's your proclivities or proclivities in the in the hobby? What are you? What kind of- Gen- generally rear wheel drive muscle car v8 kind of stuff Good. uh mm-hmm. i've got a 72 chevelle my first car i still have Sweet. i'm oddly proud of that point um got that one in high school still kind of kicking around mostly sitting in a garage but you know okay. still got it and uh picked up a few years ago off of Freiburger actually who picked it up off of the hot rod garage show that i worked on is a 67 short bed c10 
Oh, yeah. um, on the on the Hot Rod Garage show, it started life as a long bed farm truck, and the you know the the idea of that show was right. we called it hacking the C10 market because at the time and still the prices had gone absolutely bonkers, sure. but you could still grab a long bed for a decent price, and uh, there are frame shortening kits out there, so we kind of dove into one of those, uh, shortened it that. up to a short bed, and threw a whole load of QA1 suspension underneath it. Mm-hmm. Um, Freiberger took a shine to it. He ended up buying it, did a couple episodes with it on Roadkill Garage, also on Motor Trend app. Um, mm-hmm. Did a couple episodes there and then realized that he, I think at the time he had somewhere in the high 20s of cars wow. that he had just sort of <laughs> yeah. picked up over wow. the years because there were good deals or really, really wanted. And I think he was catching a little heat from the wife, is sort yeah. of my guess. But, you know, he started doing a little light liquidation and he offered it to myself and Tony and Lucky from Hot Rod Garage right. to see if any, any one of us personally wanted it back. Um, I was on my phone at the moment, saw the text as it came in and immediately put dibs on it. Um, That's the way to do it. So that, that truck's been with me for a little over a year and a half. It went, actually it went back on Hot Rod Garage, oh, just a few months ago. Um, at the beginning of quarantine, um, we needed to figure out how to continue sh- making shows for everybody. Um, Tony, one of our hosts, lives in Philadelphia, and Lucky lives out in LA. So the whole traveling in the beginning of a pandemic was mm-hmm. obviously difficult for everybody. Um, so in a really quick turnaround of creative, we took that truck that the show already knew that was mine. Um, Tony built a big block for it in Pennsylvania, while Lucky and I in California readied it to receive said big block. He stuck it in the mail and we stuck it in. So I now have compliments of, um, of Hot Rod Garage, a great truck with a great suspension and a great big block. <laughs> nice. And a six-speed automatic transmission from Gear Star. It's, it's, it's a good little truck. I'm a big fan of it. Um, You're a lucky yeah, that's, guy. That's yeah. my world is the muscle wow. car V8 rear-wheel drive kind of deal. Great. I've also been open up to imports a lot just working for Motor Trend and four-wheel drive a lot more than a dirt every day. So sure. um, it's been cool to sort of branch out my own, my yeah. own interests and my own abilities. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And I have, to, I have to say, Mike, you, you have some history. Uh, you know, I, I'm always interested in the, where people I work with have worked in the past. And you shot for Fast and Loud, right? Did. I did. I did cool. about, what was it? It was about a little over a year, about 14 months uh, working on Fast and Loud. I lived in a, in a, in a Hyatt, was it a Hyatt house for effectively a, 14 months. Um, wow. Just shooting that show, they offered regular housing, but you know, I didn't know how long I was going to be out there. What else is going to come? So I have a bunch of Hyatt points still, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which, is, which is really great. Um, but yeah, I did that one for a long time. That was an incredible experience. I mean, Richard, seeing the guy work is really something to behold. He is an incredibly sharp businessman. Working with Aaron or working alongside Aaron in, in a way, um, really cool to watch that guy work. He's sharp. He knows what he's doing. He is... None of these guys are, um, you know, uh, TV car guys. Those guys are all legit, real builders. And that, it, it was really cool to sort of watch them work. I had done a couple of, um, you know, TV car shows in the past that were a little, definitely not faked by any means, but they were a lot more heavily produced. Um, right. but so, so to watch guys really go in and, and do real and good work and, and you know, I'm standing on set, just learning things every day. Yeah. And I guess really I still am, which is kind of what I love most about the job um, is that I get to see people really knowledgeable in their field. And I'm picking up tips and tricks every day that don't even make it, you know, in that 22 minute episode. So I'll tell you what, Mike, I'll, I'll do this. Sh- I'll do the shameless self promotion here in case, you know, like we're talking about watching glue dry. If they, if there's ever need for a show about, Car guy radio hosts that you want to pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's got to be just as interesting as watching the glue dry. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> know where to begin looking for something like that. Right here. Oh, <laughs> oh. and Steve has radio <laughs> background too. So you know, and we have. I, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm just sitting around here. The right. lights are on. I don't, I don't know what you're Another guy. <laughs> Another guy with classical radio background. It's it's funny. It's it's funny, Mike, because we always say that this show we've burned it, broken broken it, torched it, melted it, whatever. Everything that you can possibly destroy on a vehicle, we have done. Ray and I, in combined, have done it, and, and then we talk about it, <laughs> and are ballsy enough to actually give advice, and we do. <laughs> 
That, that sounds bold. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's the thing. We are the show that um, we're not afraid. We'll talk more about what we did wrong than what we did right. Because, mm -hmm. again, like, hey, we're getting older. We don't care. Yeah, yeah. I've done it wrong 900 times. You haven't done it right once. You know? Yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> it's relatable. Everybody's messed up on their car. Sure. And it kind of makes people feel better to know that no other people are doing worse than they and, are. And the thing is that we both believe if we can make a teaching moment out of the wrong thing, now sure. we've really finished the goal. We've actually, you know, we, we may still not have gotten it done right, but at least we know how to do it right. And we'll, yeah. and we'll tell other people how to do it. So That's for sure. After 20 years of doing the show, I thought I was going to be the automotive know-it-all. Uh-uh. I have learned more yeah. doing this. Learned more, like you say, Mike, just than, than actually dispense information yeah. i've learned more and and loved it every minute of it every minute of it it's it's just a true joy to do but yeah, yeah it is it is unique though so i tell you what as we're getting towards the end we have a few minutes left and then we're gonna have to let kim take over tell us guys how they can how people can find steve tell me that the name is right steve magliante supermodels is the name of the show tell everybody how they can find the show how they can find you guys on social media if you like and and any other information now's the time to get it out there Take it away, Mike. Oh, I'll, I'll take it away. Um, so it is Steve Magnante Supermodels. It is on the Motor Trend app, which you can find on anywhere you can download an app, really, on your Google Play or your App Store, on your phone, Netflix, or Amazon Prime, Xbox, all the places you can get the Motor Trend app. Uh, it begins airing on the 7th, which is tomorrow. tomorrow. That is wild. Ooh. That's been uh, what thirty days since we got the thumbs up or something like that. It's been it's been a rush. I'm glad we got uh, you right in time too. So exactly. yeah. Uh, so Motor Trend app uh, starting tomorrow, June seventh. Uh, we're doing a four episode limited run. We're hoping to do many many more of these, and that'll only happen if we get the viewership for it. So we're really hoping to tap into the car community that grew up building these models. And the model community that maybe hasn't quite found Motor Trend just yet. So mm -hmm. really just kind of trying to get the word on it. But that's it. Motor Trend app, June 7th. Excellent. Steve, yeah. you want to, you have a, uh, an Instagram account? Would you like to put the information out? Yeah, yeah. Instagram, you know, Steve Yanti at uh, Instagram. Just um, I post things regularly about the show and other stuff happening in my life. And of yeah. course, Barrett Jackson's coming up, uh, right. gosh, next week, I guess it is in Las Vegas. So tune in for that. Business as usual. Life continues. The auction block heats up and uh, tune in if you can. That'll be, I think, on A&E. Right. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is awesome. No, it's the truth because we, we are avid watchers, avid viewers, and we're going to be avid watchers of this show. Steve Magnante's Supermodels. It's like, it's like a, the, you know the title is just yeah. awesome because it's like I'm picture, picturing the, the chicks hanging out with the ladies. Uh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, open up models going, hey, that's better. <laughs> Mike, is there any way people can follow you? Do you have social media that people uh, may want to follow you at? Yeah, I'm on Instagram. Uh, my handle is Mikey P TV. Uh, well, Mikey underscore P underscore TV, but that's hard to say. Right. Uh, yeah, Mikey P TV as in television. Okay. I post, you know, a, a decent one. amount of motor trendy stuff, hot rod garage stuff, and then Yante Muscle Supermodel cars and, and all that. So okay. some stuff to find there. Don't be, don't be too let down. Yeah, it's funny, Mike, because I'm looking. I'm looking at it's actually your LinkedIn page, and I love your first line. It says, uh, "You love the stability, the health benefits, and the predictable hours." <laughs> I'm like, "You're totally a TV guy with a great sense of humor." It's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I honestly <laughs> forgot that I had a LinkedIn at all. That might need to be updated. But yes, no, that that right. main thing. Fellas, we got to wrap. Kim is coming in. We got to get out of here. So, <laughs> it's a show. Thank you for coming on. We'll keep in touch, and we'll look to have you back again in the future. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Guys. See you for, for, see for Chris. This is Ray. We'll see you next week on 90.3 WHPC. Keep it where you got. Listen to Kim Tracy.